Hello everyone, my name is Jason Martin and I am so excited to talk to you today about a topic that is near and dear to my heart and that is how to exit production. So we're all on the same page. I want to talk about what production actually means, just in case you're you're wondering. By production, I mean if you are servicing sellers, if you are servicing buyers, if you are in the car with buyers, nights, evenings, weekends, holidays, if you're going on listing appointments, if you are managing contract negotiation, that is how I think of production. And by the way, before we get started, I want to let you guys know I've been in business since 2003 and we're going to talk about how to exit production today. But I don't want you to think it happened overnight. Um, I didn't exit production until about 2015. So seven or eight years ago um, along my journey. But I'll take you through my journey and we'll talk about how you can do the same. And hopefully you can do it in a much, uh, much faster time frame than I did. So I'm going to invite everybody to consider something. If you're watching this, you're obviously at least curious about exiting production. Here is why I would suggest you be more than curious about exiting production. I'm going to suggest to you today that you actually map out a plan. We're going to talk through a plan today to exit production for this reason. The reason is you never know what's going to happen to you in your life. You might get tired. You might get burned out. You might uh, you might have a family. You might not want to work nights, evenings, weekends, and holidays. If we're being really honest with one another, our job as real estate agents is a difficult one. We're on call, and I can relate to that. I've done it for a very, very, very long time. But I am here to tell you today, exiting production is a real path if you choose it. The other reason I might want you to, or perhaps you should consider rather, let me say it that way, exiting production is life happens, right? We might get to a spot in life where we physically can't be in the car anymore. I know it's a scary thought, but I'd like you to still have the opportunity to continue to produce, even if it's not you that is in the production capacity. I hope all of that makes sense. I'm going to share some stuff with you guys today and let's get started. Let's jump right in. Here's a picture of my family. Who am I? We could actually end the entire presentation right here because this is who I am. I'm a father and I'm a husband. I think business is important. Production, volume, units, all of that stuff matters, but who I actually am is this person right here. So you're going to look and, and see, you're going to see pictures of my family today and you'll understand kind of what motivates me, what inspires me. And it's these guys. I don't want to be the person that um, places business up, up above everything else, right? I want to place these guys at the top of my list. And that's my son, Connor, and my daughter, Izzy, and Riley. So thank you for letting me share my family picture with you guys. But that's really important for me to share with you. And you'll see as we continue to go down the path of how to exit production here. As we spoke earlier, I wanted to share with you. It took me a long time. I mean, it, it literally almost took me 14, 14 years to fully exit production. And the path, well, it's not straight at all. It kind of goes this way and that way, and it's a restart and it's a start over. And if you're having these questions, I want you to know it's okay. It may be part of the process. It may be part of your journey. Which direction do you want to go? Over there, nowhere, somewhere, not sure, uncertain, don't know, no idea. I got it. I got it. What I hope for you guys is today we are going to help add some clarity to your path of how you might exit production. Fun side note here, like that that's so clear as I look through those glasses there. I, um, I recently have discovered that I need readers. I am over the 40 year mark in my life, I'm 46, and now I need readers and that hurts my pride a little bit. But the cool thing about readers is they actually give me clarity on the pages that I'm reading. Isn't that fun? 
I did write a book. I want to talk to you guys about that just for a second. It's called This Is Your Captain Speaking. I wrote a book two or three years ago, and I'm going to share a chapter of that book with you guys right now. So bear with me. The book, by the way, became an Amazon bestseller. And don't worry, this isn't a um, undercover presentation to go and get you to purchase the book. It's not about that at all. You'll see where we're going in just a second because we're going to come back to that clarity slide in a minute. Matter of fact, I'm trying to read the screen right now. I actually could use readers right now as I'm reading this, but we'll see how that's, this goes. Dear kids, there's so much I want to teach you about life. Life is so precious. Time is slipping away, but I want you to know that I capture every moment I can, even when you have no idea I am. You're growing up so fast. A day goes by in a matter of seconds. A year feels more like a long weekend. Someone once shared with me that being a parent is like flying a kite. You hold on tight then slowly let out a little more string until the kite takes flight. Truth be told, mom and I don't want to let the string out yet. We want to hold on as long as we can. Despite this, we realize we have to let the string out. We understand that one day you will fly on your own and we want you to soar. Life is about living in the moments, but the memories we have created will forever be a part of my life. Our memories together are the greatest moments of my life. When you were born, something very strange happened to me that words can't describe. Other dads have tried to explain this outer body experience, but you don't fully understand it until it happens. My entire world changed the day you guys entered this world. One day I will leave this earth as we all do, and this book shall serve as a reminder of who dad was, my beliefs, my priorities, my core values. I'm perfectly imperfect as we all are. I'm proud. I'm humble. I'm grateful. I'm a husband. And above all else, I'm dad. I know this letter sounds like I'm writing from my deathbed, but I am not. I am so alive and I'm full of life. We are each on our own unique journey in this world, and this part of my journey has been very special. I don't ever want to leave behind our memories together. While this book is for you, it's also for me, so I can hold on to the kite forever. Living a full life is about becoming the best version of yourself possible. As selfish as that sounds, it's not about me. It's about you guys. I know that becoming the best version of myself possible, by becoming the best version of myself possible, those closest to me will reap the benefits. Life is not and will not always be easy. Through adversity, I've chosen to become a stronger man. Use your low points in life as an opportunity. You're going to fail many times in your life, but you only fail, truly fail, if you don't get back up. Love makes the world a better place. The most important cup you can fill up in life is those living under your own roof. Leave the world a better place than you found it. Our world is filled with good people and bad people, but they're definitely more good than bad. And even those who seem evil to their core might one day surprise you. Give people a chance. Don't predetermine who you think they are. Don't look back on your life with regrets, even though you will make mistakes. Always be true to yourself. Don't let the world decide your path. Trust in what God is telling you. To hear what he is saying, you must listen. Be calm, slow down, be grateful, and enjoy the moment. All we have in life are moments in time and memories. Happiness will come from being present in the moment. Always be filled with hope. Never remove the word hope from your vocabulary. Always be a student. Your brain will thank you. Your body is your temple, so take care of it. Try new things like writing a book. This was my first book, by the way. This book is filled with memories we've created together and the lessons I want you to keep with you long after I'm gone from this earth. I don't ever want you to wonder what would dad do or what would dad say. It's all here. This is your captain speaking. Mom and I love you guys more than anything in the world. You've given us our greatest sense of joy and purpose. May your kites drift in and out of the highest clouds on the perfect day. All right. Thank you guys for letting me share that chapter from the book with you guys. You're probably wondering, I thought this was about how to exit production. It is 100% about how to exit production. The reason I share that with you guys is because I want you to know that I have clarity. I have clarity about what my priorities are about what my purpose is in life and who I am. So my first clue for you guys about how to exit production is as you're watching this, I want you to kind of ask yourself a few questions. Who are you? Do you have clarity? What path do you want to go down? Because, 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 because today 
you get to choose. You get to choose to take a few small steps in the direction you want to go. You guys heard of this one, fake it until you make it? I don't love that one. Uh, it sounds fake to me. How about this one? Act as if. I don't want to act anything. But today you can choose to take a few steps in a direction. The reason I wanted to exit production is because I had clarity about what my priorities are. I will be very frank at this point in my career. I no longer want to service clients. I don't want to be in the car nights, evenings, weekends. These guys are who I want to spend nights, evenings and weekends with. And I think once you make a choice, you can start to move in a direction, right? One of the key components, and this is just for me. I don't know if this, this will work for you guys or not. I, I really don't. I'm just sharing my journey. And, and if, um, if it's applicable to you and you can take this stuff and go with it, then good. Uh, one of the key moments, one of the key things I focus on, not even a moment, but something I constantly focus on is personal growth. I believe this is the lead domino in achieving things you want to in your life. I believe that personal growth can be applied directly to professional growth. So every time I want to grow professionally, I start here. I start right here. I start with myself. It sounds a little selfish, but I promise you, I don't think it is at all. I actually think those closest to you will reap the benefits. What am I talking about here? If you are... Um, the best version of yourself. And I, I don't think it's a final destination, by the way. I think it's an ongoing journey. Uh, if you're the best version of yourself, those around you are going to pick up on that energy. Are you trying to be more positive? Are you trying to be more optimistic? Do you have more energy? They're going to feed off of that energy. My kids, when I'm a good version of myself, they pick up on that. They're watching. They're paying attention. So I spend a lot of time in this space. I spend a lot of time reading listening to podcasts. It matters what you're putting into your brain. Are you taking daily walks? What are you doing to clear your mind? Little things like that, I think, are really the foundation for success. So if you're that plant right there and you're getting a little bit of water and you're going to grow, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. So don't ever look past personal growth. And in fact, for me, it is the key indication of the direction I'm headed in my professional world. Personal growth before professional growth seems to work for me. I want to share a story. Before I was a sports anchor, um, before I was a sports anchor, before I was a real estate agent, I got my license in 2003. I was a sports anchor. It was a childhood dream. I went to the University of South Carolina, and my main goal in life was to become a sports anchor. That's what I wanted to do. I was lucky enough to achieve my childhood dream and in 2001 worked for a small television station in Augusta, Georgia, and then went on to become the number one sports anchor for WSFX Fox in Wilmington, North Carolina. While I was in Augusta, Georgia, I got to work the Masters, got to cover the Masters, and it was awesome. I got to tell you guys, it was a once in a lifetime experience. It was pretty cool. One of the people I got to meet there was this guy. Anybody know who this is? That is Arnold Palmer. He's special to me, and I'll tell you why. So back in 2001, when we were covering the Masters, uh, coming straight out of college, you kind of work your way up through the ranks. You don't just jump right in automatically as the number one sports anchor, the guy you see every night on television. So when I was covering the Masters, I was actually the camera guy, right? And there's an old school reporter that had been in Augusta for 20 plus years, I think, before I got there, and his name was George Escott. If you don't understand television markets, what you need to know about Augusta is that it is a smallish, smaller market. All right. It's not a it's not a New York or D.C. or uh, Chicago. It's a small market and it's kind of a small town. Anyway, back to Arnold Palmer. So I'm working the camera. Uh, visualize this with me. I'm working the camera. George Escola, the, the small town reporter in Augusta, Georgia, is the uh, the guy I'm with that day. And he says to me, Jason, come over here. I want to go get Arnold Palmer real quick. Well, let me tell you folks something. When Arnold Palmer is at Augusta National, he, uh, 
he's just magnetic. When he walks around Augusta National, everybody knows it's Arnold Palmer. And in fact, when Arnold Palmer's walking around Augusta National or coming out to talk to the press, there's usually a couple hundred people waiting to speak with Arnold Palmer. Imagine a room filled with 100 or 200 people, and you're all trying to get one person, and that one person is Arnold Palmer. So George says, let's get Arnold Palmer, Jason. We'll go over here and get him. I'm thinking to myself, George, you're awesome. This is going to be really fun. There's no way in hell we're going to be able to get Arnold Palmer. I can just look around. There's the Golf Channel here. There's ESPN here. And we're in Augusta, Georgia, a small town market. So Arnold walks out of the clubhouse, walks straight up to George Eskiller and goes, Hey, George, how you doing? Nice to see you again. Welcome back to Augusta. I will remember that forever. Because in that moment, I knew everything I wanted to know about Arnold Palmer. It taught me a lot about life. It taught me the type of person I wanted to become. And that was a very special moment for me. Because, 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 because I knew what type of leader I wanted to become. And I wanted to become like Arnold Palmer. So one thought for you guys to kind of hold on to. You never know your impact, the impact you'll have on somebody that will last an entire lifetime. This memory will stay with me forever. So as you lead people in your family, your organization, whatever, wherever you're leading somebody, you're a leader automatically. I promise you, you are. Just know that your impact on somebody might be very, very profound. This was a three minute interaction and I never forgot it. So remember, you have that responsibility as a leader. So back to what does this look like? People. We're talking about people. John Coleman. He is my business partner. I love Mr. Coleman so much. We uh, started working together probably eight or nine years ago now. And what I love about John Coleman is that he leads from the heart. And he is a service provider to clients at a very, very high level. He started as a showing assistant with me and quickly, pay attention to this, quickly became better with clients than I ever was. And I think I was pretty doggone good with clients, but John was better with clients than ever before. So if you're wondering who are the key people in my world that have allowed me to exit production, numero uno right here is Mr. Coleman. Now, I also want to share with you guys, I want Mr. Coleman to have the exact same opportunities I do. I don't want this to be a one-way street where John is just a vehicle for me to exit production. I actually give everything I've got to John and I pour into him as much as possible. And in fact, in this exact moment, we are beginning to map out a plan for John Coleman to exit production in the same fashion that I did. So you have to pour back into your people right? And when you're becoming this best version of yourself through this thing, personal growth, I believe you become magnetic and you'll start to attract the right people in your world. And for me, John Coleman's an amazing individual. In fact, my kids reach out to him for advice, which is kind of cool. That's how much I think of Mr. Coleman and his wife, Julia. All right. My next favorite person, Mariah Hensley, our director of operations. She runs our entire organization. Everything from, uh, from budget to sign ordering to it, just imagine anything associated with a real estate sales team. Mariah handles that. And I put her there because she is so calm. She's so collected. And she's somebody I hope we're in business with for a long, long time. So my job as, as a leader is to make sure that I'm filling her cup up because she gives so much to the organization and I just want to give as much back to her as possible. Two people have been game changing for me. Two people have allowed me to exit production. That's it. And by the way, let's, let's pause here. I don't think you need uh, a large sales team like we have. We've got a 20 person sales team. I'll show you the organizational chart in a second. I don't think you need that many people to exit production. You could be a single agent doing three or four deals a year or five or six deals a year and choose to exit production. 
That's it. You could just make a decision back to the today you choose slide to never be in production again. And you could make that decision as a single agent. So don't compare and contrast. Just know what you want in your life and what you want your business to look like. Along with people who's in your world, I think it's really important to understand your value proposition. What is your value proposition, not only to your clients, but everybody you're leading in your organization? John and Mariah are both super aware that, that what my number one priority is and who I want to surround myself with and why I do what I do and what I want them, what I want for them. And these little cubes here are pretty close to our value proposition as an organization. Core values, trust, integrity, honesty, respect, responsibility, ethics, innovation, equality. All of those mean a lot, a lot to me. So I think it's super important that you understand your value proposition. If you don't, think about it for a second and go back to who are you? I think you can answer your value proposition back with that who am I slide and then start to put your core values down. And that, that should align with your business value proposition. Give me a second. I'm take a take a sip of water. Oh, let's go to the next one. Time. How much time do we have? It's a good question. I actually believe that uh, our time here on this earth is very, 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 very limited. I just do. I. Uh, it's not. It, it's not. Uh, it doesn't bother me that I think that way. It actually inspires me that I think that way. It inspires me to make sure I'm always grounded and who I want to spend most of my time with. And you guys already know, but I want to talk to you about time for a second. These are my babies. You already saw them in the beginning picture, right? And this was, oh man, it's kind of sad to look at this. It, it, uh, they're growing up so fast. This one gets me. This probably had to be 10 years ago. Well, we're going to talk about time. Snap. Boom. This was this past Mother's Day. These guys go from this to this like that. I think time's really important. I think you should be aware of it. I think you should think about it. And I think you should be strategic about it. Let me show you what our organizational structure looks like. There's the Jason Martin Group, founded in 2003. Um, the founder, woohoo, I'm a big deal. Not really. I'm just here, just having fun. Uh, it looks like this. I already showed you a couple people. Mariah Hensley, Director of Operations on the left. John Coleman, Head of Production there. I'll stay with the left-hand side for a second. Katie Jeffcoat is our Director of Personal Growth. I actually call her the Director of Happiness. It's a true, it's a true thing. We have a position on our team that is in charge of that. Hmm. It's interesting, right? It's a lot of fun. People enjoy it. Michael Kilner is our bookkeeper. On John's side, uh, the production side, we've got Ashley Bradowski in Rhiannon, the showing assistant for John, and the listing coordination on uh, Rhiannon. That was John out with that as well. Matthew Sharon, he's our contracts coordinator. And by the way, I don't know if we shared this with you because it doesn't really matter, but I'll give you some perspective. Um, we sell about 250 homes a year, and that's what that looks like. Matt Sharon is here, contracts coordinator. He helps with the contracts to close process. And then there are 18 agents um, on the production side. Set yours up however you want to set yours up. This is what works for me. And I want you guys to know we're not an organization that distributes leads. Do you remember what our value proposition was back here? This is our value proposition to this group of people. And what we work on is personal growth 80 to 90% of the time in the organization. So while you're thinking personal growth is great, how does that, how do I get to professional growth? I'm telling you our entire organization is built on personal growth. That is why we hired a director of happiness, Katie Jeffco. She's right there in the blue. She is awesome. She's super special to work with as well. She's amazing too. So um, I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for all of these people. In, in our world. What's fun about our organization is we all lift each other up. And it's like this thing where 
when you're surrounded with the right type of people, your world continues to expand. Another note on this is as people come up in your world, right? You're going to have leaders come up in, in your world. I want them to be able to do as much as they want to, right? Like I hope somebody in this group, I hope the next John Coleman comes out of this group right here. I really do. And I hope John gets out of production and I hope Mariah gets everything she wants out of the organization. That's my job as the leader. And I hope uh, I could go down the list and talk to you about everybody and what, what they want out of life. And we focus on it. Our goals, we do year end planning and they're called life goals, not production. They're just called life goals. Cause to me, that's what matters. And that's, that's what this thing is all about. That's for me. All right. You're probably wondering, well, what is this thing? How do I actually get out of production? This entire presentation was a little bit of a hoodwink, right? Like he didn't give me any substance about the how. I actually don't think that's true. I actually think I gave you everything you need to know about how to get out of production. We talked about clarity. We talked about today you get to choose. We talked about personal growth. We talked about people. We talked about your value proposition and we talked about time and we spoke about time. This is my roadmap to exit production. I could make it more complicated, but I don't actually believe that it is. This is what works for me. I hope it'll work for you or at least some of the parts. I want to share a quote with you. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Hmm. What if I want to go fast and far? That's a question to ponder. If you want to go fast and far, go with kindred spirits. If you have any questions, this is how you can connect with me right here. Any way you like, Facebook, Instagram, email, phone, it's all good. I'm actually terrible with email, so you're better off texting me. But what would be more fun is DM me on Instagram. As we're starting to put some fun videos out there. Hey, we did a slide about time. And I want to just thank you for your time today. And I know how valuable that is. And so that's it, folks. I appreciate you so much. I wish you the best of luck in your journey. And uh, hopefully we'll cross paths one day. So long, friends.